Comfrey is amazing. And today I'm going to tell you why. For multiple years we lived in Tennessee. We had hard, rocky clay and we worked at it and we worked at it and we worked at it. And some of the stuff that I really wanted to grow from Florida just wouldn't go. So, for example, I brought up some cassava cuttings with me. I'm going to try in zone 6 slash 7 to grow cassava and see if I could push it. No. They rotted. They died. I tried various things to push the zone and to experiment and to grow good crops there, but I had to relearn what grew. And I read about this wonderful plant called comfrey. And when I planted comfrey in Tennessee, in that hard, rocky, miserable clay soil that if you tilled it, it would turn into bricks, and you had to plant an apple tree with a pickaxe, comfrey did great there. It, it expanded, it made nice bunches, you could divide it up and spread it all over the place, and it was wonderful. In that climate, comfrey was amazing. Another time, I did a talk down in South Florida. Somebody brought me multiple bundles of comfrey, and I said, where did you grow this? And he said, oh, we grew it right near here. And I said, really? Because it's really never done particularly well at all in my North Florida garden. I love the idea of comfrey. I wanted a reliable chop and drop plant with all the benefits of, you know, nutrient accumulation and medicinal benefits, etc. But it didn't grow well for me. And he said, well, we got some seeds and we tried this variety and these seedlings did crazy. They're like a weed. Interesting. In his backyard, homestead area, um, it, it did great. So let's talk about why this is such a useful plant. As a medicinal, it is excellent. There was a time, I know this is going to blow your mind, but there was a time that I cut myself with a machete. Not that time, but the other time. One of the other times, I cut myself with a machete. You have to, you have to master your fear. You, you realize that. Like, don't just give up on something just because you've cut yourself on it, right? I mean, you don't just divorce your wife because she tries to cut off your head with a chainsaw. You're going to make that thing work. You're going to go to counseling and it's going to work out. It'll be fine. So I, I, you know, I didn't stop using machete, but I was out working with the machete and I was cleaning up some bamboo and I had it slip along a piece of bamboo and I was holding it, holding the bamboo and thwack. I cut this chunk out right below my knuckle and I was like, oh, that's bad. Fortunately, he didn't cut any tendons. But I had a nurse friend who was helping me in the yard at that point because she was another gardener and we would work together on projects sometimes. And she said, oh, let's clean that out and get some comfrey on it. Oh, that's right, comfrey. Yeah, knit bone. It's supposed to be good for all kinds of stuff other than just making into fertilizer and using for a chop and drop. So she had me make a strong tea out of comfrey and drink it for a couple of days. And she smashed up a bunch of comfrey and after cleaning the wound out, we packed it around there and bandaged it up. And you know, that pinked over and healed so fast compared to normal. I mean, normally I heal pretty quickly. I'm moderately healthy. But that was startlingly fast. Like it was knitting back together again the next day. And so I'm convinced that the medicinal properties of comfrey make it worth growing. Now, you might say, well, in your last video, you said comfrey was terrible. That's terrible. You don't understand how the mind of a genius works. So what I want you to do is to think about each plant and each tool in terms of how you're going to use it. Does it work in your area? Does it fit your climate? Does it fit where you are? When I was in North Central Florida and here, it did not, Comfrey did not like being in my garden and it was not a robust chop and drop plant. It does really well this time of year when it's cool. It kind of comes back when it comes back. Sometimes it dies completely during the summer and it comes back sometimes and it grows kind of well for a while and then it gets weird rot issues and it dies down to the ground and it has, it just is not the like, oh, it just fills a huge area. Don't till it, it'll spread everywhere. Like if I tilled it, it would die. It didn't like the sunny areas, it didn't like the sand, so it didn't really fit. When I was in Tennessee, it was fantastic. So when I moved to Florida, I switched and I used Moringa and Tithonia diversifolia, which I should have mentioned in the last 
video. It's called Mexican Sunflower. But don't get Tithonia rotundifolia because that one is uh, generated by seeds and that's a short-lived annual. Tithonia diversifolia from zone eight and south is a really good massive nutrient accumulator, chop and drop, phosphorus, all, all that good stuff. Grow that plant. It did way better for me than Comfrey. So when Comfrey is advertised as this all-around cure-all, it's not an all-around cure-all in all locations. Just as I've said, potatoes are one of the best crops you can grow. I'm gonna talk on that again, your best survival crops. Stay tuned for that. But potatoes are like just the awesome, like pack a whole bunch of calories into a small space and they work. But guess what? I was talking to a friend of mine down in South Florida, Davie, Florida. I was talking to her this afternoon. She said, I can never get potatoes to grow, but sweet potatoes do great for me. Well, guess what? If you were in Idaho, You'd have a hard time growing sweet potatoes, but your white potatoes would do fantastic. So you have to work with what actually works with you. So don't take what somebody says, a, a guru, as this thing will work for you all the time. This is always the way you're gonna do it forever and ever. Without giving it some testing and figuring out, does it really work where you are? I think comfrey is well worth me growing as a medicinal in my gardens because it, it heals and it's useful. And for the period of time that I have it, I can make liquid fertilizers out of it. But is it going to be a great chop and drop that I put all over the orchard and it works great? I don't know, unless I find that awesome variety that just so happens to do great. But if you're in your climate and you're watching somebody, pay attention to where he or she is talking from, right? If that person is in a climate that's very different than yours, and he's going, oh, you got to do raised beds, or oh, you should do it like this, or you should do it like this, take it with a grain of salt, Test some of it in your backyard and see if it works. And if it doesn't work, don't beat yourself up. Don't think like, I failed at the universal Swiss army knife plant. I'm an absolute failure. Because when I was down in the West Indies, I couldn't grow potatoes to save my life and I tried to grow potatoes. But I could grow breadfruit. You get up into Florida, you can't hardly grow either of them. You get up here, I could grow potatoes, but I definitely can't grow breadfruit. So you gotta roll with what you got and learn from what you got and learn from other people, but just do a little bit of experiment and work in your backyard and say, does this work for me? Is it worth trying? Don't beat yourself up. If you do an experiment, it doesn't work well. We're all gonna die in the end. So don't worry too much. You don't wanna die without having Comfrey die on you first, do you? Thanks for joining me. Remember, Comfrey is amazing. Don't let anyone tell you any differently. Sure to check out my website, thesurvivalgardener.com. Like and subscribe and check out my books where I try to get behind the philosophy of what we're doing and the methodology and the thought process rather than just giving you like, here's the one size fits all. Just wanted you to think about that. And until next time, may your thumbs always be green. I wish there was more I could do with these scraps. Good. I compost everything. Be nice to your mother and always say please. Be loyal to friends and compost your enemies. Be nice to your mother and always say please. Be loyal to friends and compost your enemies. Be nice to your mother and always say